Hello, everybody. This is AG here, and welcome to the Rockingham Speedway in Rockingham, North Carolina, as we are here for the fifth feature event of the season in the Wall Wall Pro Series season number two. This is the Carolina 100K. 62 laps of action around this 1.017 mile speedway. Small town in North Carolina here today. We should have ourselves an excellent race here today as well. We had a great sprint race a couple days ago. It wasn't great for some folks, unfortunately. Uh, Tyree Cartman, Vlad Prescott, when flipping him that, uh, that event. Hopefully we do not see any of that here today, but uh, three times as long of a race here today for the feature event, so there is likelihood of a caution in today's event. We'll also have a cycle of pit stops as well here today, about a 40 lap fuel run for these guys, so that will also come into effect on who gets the race victory. But one of the bigger storylines from that sprint race was Gary Corelli falling all the way to the back of the field. He starts 24th in this race, so a huge opportunity for a lot of these guys who have not been running as well as Gary Corelli to close in on Corelli in this championship battle. In the point standings, Gary Corelli holds a 12-point lead on Trey Wright and Chase Buck. That's an entire feature win uh, for those guys. So Gary Corelli is at least going to be tied for the points lead exiting this race, guaranteed. Zachary Fitzwater is 23 points behind, and then a massive amount of drivers 24 behind. Landon Smith Jr., Seth Cole, Ashland Boyd, Fisher G., and Christopher Alphaby, all 24 points behind coming into this race. Of course... As the season moves along, these points are going to spread out a little bit more, and uh, we won't have five guys tied for one position. Um, but hey, that's just the way it is right now. We've only gone through four feature events and five sprint races, and uh, we're only a fifth of the way through the season once we are complete with today's event. Another big storyline from the Rockingham sprint race, Nicholas Samadio won his 22nd career win on the channel. And he is going to be starting on the pole as well. Four points for San Badillo in that sprint race. And he has an opportunity at uh, having a perfect race weekend. 16 total points. Winning the pole for the feature. Winning the sprint race. And winning the feature event itself. We'll have to see if he can do so starting on the pole position. Alongside him, Joey Hightower. Another great starting position for Hightower after he finished runner-up at Road America last time out. But a lot of guys behind them who have a great opportunity at possibly getting a race victory. Their first of the season here in the Wall Wall Pro Series. Like I mentioned, it's Nicholas Samadio starting on the pole in number 57. Alongside him, Joey Hightower there in the 55 machine, looking to be one spot higher than he was last week. Alex in a row. I think this is a great opportunity for Alex in a row to get his first win of the season, starting there in the third position to the inside of Ben Young. Jacob Walker looking for his first points of the season. Justin Zidell, Roberto Crown Jr., and Jacob Walker, the only three drivers who have yet to point this season in the Wall Wall Pro Series. And either the sprint races or the feature events. Thomas Trotzel there, going to be starting to his outside in the sixth position. Our last winner here in the Wall Wall Pro Series, at least in the feature event. Chase Buck won the feature at Road America. He swept Road America the sprint race in the feature event. You see the inside is Zachary Fitzwater, and Brad Stover and Eric Monaco make up row number five. Starting in the sixth row is the number 73 of Landon Smith Jr. Finished runner-up in the sprint race two days ago. To the inside of Trey Wright there in row number six. Row seven sees Jesse Turner and Seth Cole. We got Fisher G, the Willow Springs winner to the inside of Brennan Wellington, who did not have a good race at Road America in either the sprint or the feature event. Ashland Boyd to the inside of Scott Upton, Chris Reynolds, and Zach Winkle. Ryan Madden and William Brock. Then you got Dylan Young in there with the points leader Gary Corelli deep in the field. Justin Zidell and Christopher Alphaby, and then the four guys who didn't even complete a lap in the sprint race two days ago. Roberto Crown Jr., Vlad Prescott, Hunter Braxton, and Tyreek Hartman. That's the full field starting lineup here from Rockingham. Hopefully we have a cleaner race here today. But either way, we'll have a cycle of pit stops, so that'll shake the field up. About a 40-lap fuel run for these guys. Let's see how that affects the race victory. We're Green Flag Racing in the Carolina 100K. Nicholas Samadio leads us to the Green Flag. Contact there off the outside wall for Joey Hightower. He started on the outside pole and uh, 
He's fallen back quite a bit now after that contact there with the outside wall. Thomas Trossel way up high here. He's going to smack the outside wall, come back down and hard into the inside wall. And again, that same place we had an incident yesterday, Gary Corelli, I think, might have gotten caught up in that one in the 18. Got damage on Dylan Young. Yeah, Corelli did get caught up. Scott Upton, William Brock, Ryan Madden, Trey Wright, Seth Cole as Trossel got sent around there. On the second lap of the race. Well, we made it one lap longer than we did yesterday, so I, I think that's that's success right there. Nicholas Amadio, Alex in a row, Jacob Walker, Chase Buck, and Ben Young, the top five. I don't think we'll see anybody coming down here. That's a tough break for Thomas Trotho. That's two races in a row. Had an issue at Road America. It sent him home early in that race. He didn't get any points there, and it looks like he will be without any points here today as well as he got sent up on that outside. Joey Hightower in that 55 machine also uh, had a little bit of contact, but that incident right there might save him, and then you also have uh, Dylan Young there in the 79 who has some damage. Wasn't as bad of a wreck as yesterday, or two days ago, I should say. I'm forgetting we had the Hurst Dash Series yesterday instead. Chris Reynolds has some damage. Scott Upton, that's not a good moment there for Collins Racing. They all get caught up in that one. I think Gary Carilli got a piece of that one as well as the points leader. This has not been his race weekend. So like I said, a huge opportunity for a lot of guys to catch up. Especially Chase Buck, because Chase Buck is currently in the points. Trey Wright, on the other hand, was actually caught up in that wreck along with Seth Cole, Ryan Madden, William Brock in the back there. So, multi-car accident here to bring out the first caution of the day in the Carolina 100K. Let's go ahead and see what happened to bring out the caution here at Rockingham. You're going to see here with Thomas Troxel in the 21. That's just a terrible angle. We saw this happen to Justin Zydell a couple days ago. And uh, I got a clip of Trey Wright. That's the second time Trey Wright's been involved in a very similar accident. It was a very hard hit to the inside wall for Troxel. Then Chris Reynolds, Ryan Madden, Seth Cole, Brandon Wilmington got a piece of it there. It wasn't as bad as the accident a couple days ago. No one went flipping this time, but Seth Cole getting caught up right there. He tapped Chris Reynolds again. Dylan Young, that's where he got his damage in the 79 machine. And Seth Cole goes up into the outside wall right here. And then everyone tries to scramble to avoid... Ryan Madden, Trey right there, Thomas Troxel, they got caught up back in there. And Scott Upton came in there and hit Seth Cole. And William Brock kind of back in there with all that as well. And Gary Corelli had the check up to avoid it. He never got caught up in the accident per se, but uh, our points hitter deep in the field here. It's going to be tough for him to have an opportunity at keeping that, uh, or keeping that 12 point lead, I should say, <laughs> heading in to Dover. Replay this in real time, and you see Troxel smash that outside wall. Took a hard hit to the inside there, and Seth Cole just has nowhere to go there as Chris Reynolds comes up. It's a very difficult place because they try to save it. We saw like, uh, two days ago with Tyree Cartman. He was going to save that car, but just snapped around him, and uh, that's why we had such a violent accident a couple days ago. A very similar case right there for those guys. No one came down the pit lane. Of course, a 40-lap fuel run. So Nicholas Amadio is still out front in the number 57. Let's see what he does on the restart here in the Carolina 100K. Back here at the Rockingham Speedway after the multi-car accident down Thunder Alley here at the Rockingham Speedway. It's been a bit of a treacherous place for these guys over the past couple of days. And the sprint race a couple days ago had that same issue. Guys, three wide on the outside, smacks the outside wall, and then comes back down. But now that we're going to have a single file restart, hopefully we'll get some laps in here and have a nice clean race. Nicholas Samadio has led every lap so far. Alex in a row in second. Jacob Walker looking for his first points of the season, running third. Chase Buck looking for two in a row. And then Ben Young, Zachary Fitzwater, Brad Stover, Jesse Turner, Landon Smith Jr., and Fisher G. The top ten. Only driver out of the race after the accident. Thomas Troxel in the number 21 who took a hard hit to the inside wall. Everybody else is still on the lead lap. And a much more orderly restart there than the start of the race. Nicholas Amadio holding on to the race lead is ahead of Alexander Rowe. But this 76 is looking very fast. Jacob Walker had to check up through the corner. That's going to bunch those guys up behind him. Chase Buck might have an opportunity here at third. Oh, but they're all going to try to get around him. And they're going to go three wide again. 
But Ben Young thinks better of it and backs out. That's uh, good for Jacob Walker, and uh, they'll keep it clean down the backstretch. Chase Buck trying to move to the inside of the 13 machine. Walker's going to stay ahead in the 13 machine. Sam Adio and Alex in a row have kind of pulled out to a significant lead at this point. Alex in a row has not had a good season. Only one point on the year so far for Alexander Rowe. Uh, so just like Jacob Walker, it's not been, it's practically no points on the year. Uh, but he does have a good opportunity here at getting a race victory, but he's got to beat Mr. Edge to do it. He's going for his 23rd career win on the channel here today. Jacob Walker looking for his first career win. And he's going up against two guys who combined have over 30 wins on the channel. So we'll have to see what Walker can do. Chase Buck doing a nice job holding that line. Not as much shuffling going on as we saw on the Hers Dash Series race yesterday. Guys having a little bit more difficulty passing. Got Brad Stover though, getting to the inside of Landon Smith Jr. Jesse Tinner inside this top 10. Fitzy's up here as well in the 59 and Ben Young in the 24 trying to hold on to that fifth position. Brad Stover might have a shot here on Fitzwater as they enter turn number one. It looks like Stover will take that away. Chase Buck has a shot here on Jacob Walker. That is for third, but Walker doing a great job holding on to this third position ahead of the 09 machine. But Chase Buck will have a run here down the front stretch, and he might shoot down to the inside in the turn number one if he's going to have the opportunity, but he will not. Walker will stay ahead. Trackhouse Racing doing a good job here. Reggie Fogelman's team. Sam Adio with a defensive line on Alexander Rowe here, but Rowe is right there, and that actually may be what Rowe wants to see. He might get a good run here off of turn four and have a shot on the 57 in the turn one. Uh, that is not going to be the case right there. Brad Stover, however, he's looking really fast. He's to the inside of Ben Young now for the fifth position. He's moved up a couple of places, so has Jesse Turner. Turner moving his way through the field fairly well in this number five machine. Stover looking to the inside of Chase Buck. Could not get to the inside when they're entering the corner. But Turner definitely coming strong here in the number five. But Fitzwater looking to cross back over on the number five machine for the seventh position. Sam Adio now trying to pull away here. He started in the 12th position for the sprint race two days ago. Moved himself through the field and uh, grabbed that race victory. And now it does appear that he's got one of the fastest cars out here as he has uh, held every lap so far here in this Carolina 100K. The fastest lap overall in the race goes to Jacob Walker, the number 13 machine. So we'll have to see how uh, well he can hold on to that heading into Dover. The Dover Sprint is going to be the next event that we have here in the Wall Wall Pro Series. And of course the fastest lap for the feature event determines the starting lineup for the Sprint Race of the next race weekend. Looks like Jacob Walker has some long run speed here. He uh, didn't quite have the short term speed right there. And Chase Buck closed right on him. But Walker now right on the back bumper of Alex in a row. And Rowe is closed back in on Sam Adio for the race lead. Fitzwater up to six. Landon Smith Jr., Jesse Turner. They're all getting around Ben Young, who's now stuck in this outside lane. Eric Monaco and Dylan Young here on the inside as well. How about Tyree Cartman here? In the 61, just outside the top 10. He started in dead last for this race, got caught up, was flipping all over the place yesterday, and uh, here he is looking to rebound from, I keep on saying yesterday, it was two days ago, I gotta get used to that. Looking the rebound though, from that uh, awful sprint race that he had, if you want to call it a race, he ran half a lap and then was out of the race on upside down. Monaco looking here on Turner, that is for the eighth position, as they all get around Ben Young right there. Still the same top three. Sam Medio doing a great job holding this 76 behind him of Alexander Rowe. Now, cycle of pit stops will definitely determine who gets the race victory, especially if these guys stay as close as they do. Whoever comes in first is going to end up with the advantage, and we saw that in the Hurst Dash Series race. However, later on in that run, if this thing stays green all the way through, those guys who came down a couple laps later during that green flag cycle are going to be going faster near the end of the run. But the thing is, it's only going to be about a 20-lap run to the end of the race. Alexander Rowe may not need to use strategy. He's been able to close into the back bumper of San Badillo, but he just hasn't been able to make the move to the inside. Fitzwater going for fifth now here on Brad Stover, and this 59 is looking really fast. 
Got three of the all time winningest drivers on the channel inside the top ten right now. Turner there in eighth, Fitzwater in fifth, and then of course Sam Medio leading the field. Alexander also a very strong driver as well. He hasn't shown much strength yet this season, but a great opportunity for him here in this 76 to have a shot at the 57. Jacob Walker here in the third position, but here comes Fitzwater for fourth, and he continues to move up in this 59 machine. Chase Buck slipping back just a little bit there in the 09. Doesn't quite have the speed that he had at Road America last week, but still trying to get some points here today and possibly close in on Gary Corelli in this championship. Corelli is nowhere to be found, at least in terms of the top 10. Very deep in the field all the way back right now in the 21st position. See Fisher G here in the 89 actually might get in the way of our race leaders here in a moment. He's uh, way off the pace there, 21 seconds off the race lead. This actually could determine the battle for the top position here in a few moments. Walker's still holding on to these guys, but Fitzwater looking really strong now up to the fourth position in that 59 machine. And none of these guys have really pulled away from each other here. Sam is kind of holding all these guys back and don't really want that heading into the cycle of pit stops. Of course, about a 40 lap fuel run for these guys here at Rockingham, so that is about the time these guys are going to come down the pit lane, but if you're right behind somebody, you can easily surpass them. Even if you come down on the same lap, if you have a better pit stop, that could go a long way on a track like this. Here comes Fitzwater for third. And Zachary Fitzwater looking for his 27th career win on the channel here today. His first in the Wall Wall Pro Series this season, if he can do it. Sam Medio had to make an evasive move right there as they get around Fisher G in the 89. Fitzwater is gonna be right there on the back bumper of Rowe and Sam Medio, and then Stover is here as well. But Jacob Walker kind of uh, getting the short end of the stick on that one. He's going to fall back to sixth now as Fisher G got in the way. Turner's now in seventh. Monaco in a battle for eighth with Landis Smith Jr. How about Justin Zidell looking for his first points of the season? He's just inside the top ten. Sam Adia pulling back away as Fitzwater's on the back bumper of Alexander Rowe here for second. Fitzwater's definitely going to be uh, a threat to win this race. Might be between Sam Medio and Fitzwater here today, but Stover's also fast. He's He's been, he did get passed by Fitzwater, but he's been moving his way through the field as well, and uh, he's currently running in the fourth position. Chase Buck is fifth. Yeah, Walker and Turner, I think, has been pretty fast. He's got some late run speed right now. Same with Zydell and Tyreek Hartman. Hartman now inside the top ten. Lana Smith Jr. fell outside there. And for second, Zachary Fitzwater with another position here, trying on Alex in a row, unable to get it right there. Brad Stover trying to hold off Chase Buck for the moment, and he will do so successfully. Alexander Earl looking to close back in on Sam Badillo. He wants to get around Sam Badillo and put someone in between him and Fitzwater, because I think this field knows that Fitzwater is one of the fastest guys out here. Of course, with the tire wear the way it is, he doesn't have the fastest lap at the moment. That's still Jacob Walker, who had it early on in the event. But uh, once we get to the cycle of pit stops, these guys are going to be going pretty fast, and I think we'll see... That fastest lap be dethroned by somebody else. Here we go for second. Zachary Fitzwater to the inside of Alexander Rowe. Of course, as the tire wear increases here all around, around this racetrack, an outside lane does tend to work a little bit better, more of an arc. You don't have to slow down as much. You don't need as much grip as you do on the inside lane, but I don't think that matters too much for Fitzwater. He saved up his tires well early on in the run, and he's going to easily drive by Alexander Rowe for the second position. Now there's one more for Fitzwater, and that's Nicholas Samadillo. So two of the old-time winningest drivers are going to battle it out here today. Now Chase Buck to the inside of Brad Stover. And Turner there as well. Zidell looking really quick in the 47. He's up to eighth. Zidell's won here before. He won the Turkey Hill National Series race uh, a couple years ago. Actually, last year. It was just last year. Feels a lot longer, but uh, last year he did win the Turkey Hill National Series here. Oh, that was an interesting move right there. Going to go three wide through the corner. Seidel had to run to the outside, and he's going to send Jacob Walker into the outside wall, and Walker falling further back here. Seidel trying to work the outside lane on Turner, but uh, unable to get anything to work to his favor right there, and Chase Buck will get back around Brad Stover. A lot of battling going on behind. Sam has led every lap in this race, but the battle's behind him. 
Early. Oh, and there we go. Something a miss on the 61 and the 75. They're scrambling all over the place. I think Tyree Cartman and Eric Monaco both have issues. Something's wrong with the 75. And I think Tyree Cartman might have been right there whenever it occurred, but that did not look good at all, and that's going to really shake things up. Zach Winkle now inside the top 10. Trying to catch our breath here after all that. Nicholas Samadio, Zachary Fitzwater for third. Chase Buck on Alexander O'Reau falling back now in the 76. You got Brad Stover, Justin Zidell up to sixth. That 47 is really fast. And you got Turner, Jacob Walker, Zach Winkle, and Atlanta Smith Jr. after the issues between Hartman and Eric Monaco. So much happens in every single race. It's kind of hard to keep track of it all. This race is flying by. We're now on lap 34-62. We're past halfway here in this Carolina 100K. Nicholas Samadio has led every lap so far, but that 59 is coming, and he just gained two tenths that last lap. Very good opportunity that Zachary Fitzwater could take the race lead before the cycle of pit stops begin here. Alexander Rowe still holding on to third. Chase Buck in fourth, trying to close in on Corelli in the points as Corelli is still deep in the field here, running 23rd at the moment. Doesn't look like Corelli's going to get any points this weekend. Zydell now up to fifth, however, and this 47 is really fast. Same with Zach Winkle. Zach Winkle moving through the field very well. He's now to the inside of Turner for seventh. So a couple of late bloomers here, late in the run. Zydell and Winkle both really quick right now. Some of the fastest cars on the track. And that last point now being held by Dylan Young in the 79 machine. As Turner is falling back, he's losing his speed as the tire wear is incredibly significant at the moment. But here we go for the race lead. Zachary Fitzwater in the 59 looking on Nicholas Samadio. And this 59 is incredibly fast right now compared to the rest of the field. Even though Samadio's led every lap, Fitzwater's been the fastest guy here today. No doubt about it. He's moved his way through the field very nicely as the caution's out. Ashlyn Boyd in the 67. Definitely an issue on that machine, and I'm not sure who else got caught up in that, but that's going to be a good opportunity for Nicholas Samadio because he's not going to have to play strategy. None of these guys are going to have to play strategy because they'll all come down right here, and that'll be the cycle of pit stops here today in the Carolina 100K. Tough break for Ashland Boyd. He was deep in the field already, but uh, looks like he will fail to finish here in the Carolina 100K. Here we go. Going to be a four-tire stop for this entire field, no doubt about it. Some guys in the back uh, still waiting here to get onto the pit lane, but uh, that top 12 or so, they're ready to go. Sam and Neil going to lead them down. Seidel's been really quick. Zach Winkle's been really quick. And Zachary Fitzwater. They've been some of the fastest guys later into the run. But now we're going to have a bit of a short run here coming off of a restart. And I think we'll see San Medio and Alex in a row maybe pick the speed up a little bit here. Assuming they have clean pit stops and get out ahead here. And of course, it'll be a four-tire stop for this entire field. Considering the tire wear that we have here, San Medio will win the race off. Then it'll be Fitzwater. Alex in a row, Justin Zidell is fourth. Watch out for Zidell on this one. Then it's Stover, Jacob Walker, Dylan Young, Chase Buck, Jesse Turner, and Tyree Cartman. The top ten off the pit lane. But they are led by Nicholas Samadio, who will continue his streak of leading laps here, but he's going to have to hold off some of the faster cars later in this run. Zachary Fitzwater, Justin Zidell is going to be a threat to win this race. We're going to have ourselves a great battle of the finish here at the Rockingham Speedway in the Wild Wild Pro Series. But first, let's go ahead and see what happened to bring out the second caution of the day here in the Carolina 100K. And uh, this is really no one's fault. Ashland Boy just blows up right across the start finish line in that number 67 machine. And uh, yeah. Nowhere for Joey Hightower to go, right behind him in the 55, and this is where Ashland Boyd gets his damage. A lot like the accident yesterday in the Hurst Dash Series race with um, Noah Clifton. That happened down the backstretch, but Hightower actually was the one who triggered the yellow after he hit 
P67 and the uh, high tower sideways on the racetrack there triggering the yellow flag for the second time today we'll replay this in real time and the boy just going up in smoke there and high tower nowhere to go not been a good day for high towers juggling the outside pole and uh, that that's been the highlight of the day should be an interesting restart though. Everyone's got fresh tires, everyone on the same cycle of strategy, so it's all about the speed in the car. Nicholas Samadia, will he be able to hold these guys off? We'll just have to see. 21 laps left in the Carolina 100K. We are back here at the Rockingham Speedway, and we have a sprint race left to go in this race. I mean, 21 to go when we restart here in the Carolina 100K. Nicholas Samadio has led every lap so far in this race, but I'm not too confident that he's going to get the race victory with Fitzwater behind him and Justin Zydell. They were two of the fastest cars near the end of that run. And they probably have a lot of speed in their race cars to possibly get to that 57. Alexander Rose has been up front all this, all this time as well. Um, he was right behind Samadio majority of that run, but uh, is now down in third. Brad Stover is fifth. Jacob Walker, Dylan Young, Chase Buck, Jesse Turner, and Tyree Carmen all on the points. Some guys looking for points. Landis Smith Jr., Brennan Wilmington, and Eric Monaco had his issue earlier on as well. Back to racing here at Rockingham. Match Lavoie out of the race, but everybody else still on the lead lap with the exception of Fisher G, who we lapped during that green flag run. Here we go. Sam Benio's reign is over. Zachary Fitzwater to the inside for the race lead with 20 laps to go. And he's going to drive right by that 57 for the top position. And Fitzwater now might just drive off into the sunset with this race win. Alexander Rowe might have a shot on Sam Benio. That 57 may not be as fast as he was earlier on in this event. Now Alexander Rowe wants an opportunity at a possible race victory here today. But Zydell and Stover as well are going to be hard to beat. But Sam Benio will clear the... 76. Samadio might be able to get back. No. Alex in a row has the speed. He's to the inside. Four seconds. Zydell, though. He's been really coming in quick on those corners, and he tries to hit the inside, but if he tried to do that, he'd run into the guy who's already on the inside, and he had to shoot up to the outside. That's the second time he's had to do that today. Well, this is exactly what Fitzwater wants to see in his rearview mirror. These guys battling for seconds, side by side still. Stover may make a three wide if he wants to. Sam Medea doing all he can to hold on to this second position, but uh, that's just hurting these guys from possibly catching up to Fitzwater. But Alex in a row, I think he's going to get it right here. Dylan Young in the 79 was caught up in that accident on lap two. He's now inside the top six, battling for fifth here with Justin Zydell. Zydell now to the inside of Sam Adio. Stover might try to get to the inside of Alex in a row. But they're now a second behind Fitzwater. As he just continues to drive away with this race lead. The big question is who are going to be the drivers who get the points here today? It's a great battle back in here around 10th. Landis Jr. holds on to that last point, but Turner wants to get something to go his way this season. It has not been a good season for our defending champion. Only five points on the year so far. Brandon Wilmington would love to rebound after what happened to him last week. It's going to be a tight battle between all those guys and the top ten. But imagine Fitzwater has the fastest lap now, and he does. But quite a bit on the rest of the field. 23-4-7-6, and that'll be enough to grab the pole for the Dover Sprint coming up next week. Christopher Alphaby is second. Tyree Cartman, Jacob Walker... And then Justin Zydell, the top five at the moment for that. This race is far from over, though. Alex in a row has a clean racetrack in front of him, with the exception of Fitzwater. No one really battling with him right now. Here comes Zydell. Zydell's going to be fast in the long run here. He's to the inside of Brad Stover there for the third position. And I think we'll run into Fisher G again as well before the end of this race. So that will definitely determine who gets the race victory. But now half a second Alex in a row has on Zachary Fitzwater. But Fitzwater could be playing it safe right now, saving his tires early on in the run. So that by the time we get to the later on in the run, he's going much faster than everybody else. Dylan Young up to fifth in the 79. Then it's Sam Medeo all the way back down to sixth. Tyree Cartman, Chase Buck, Jesse Turner, and Ben Young now with the last point. Hunter Braxton looking to get a point here in the 88 machine. He's moved up through the field very well. 
That's the guy who started last and the guy who started on the pole right on each other in 6th and 7th right now. You know, the guy Fitzwater might have to worry about is Justin Zydell. This 47 is quick. And Zydell might have a shot here on Alex in a row for second. Oh, contact there in the back with Jacob Walker. He's been falling back a lot in this race, and it looks like he's going to have to wait another race weekend before he gets points in this series. There goes Zydell to the inside of Alex in a row for second. And Rowe just doesn't quite have that longer run speed. 11 laps to go here in the Carolina 100K, and Zachary Fitzwater looking for his 27th career win on the channel. All-time winningest driver on the channel. All-time winningest driver in all of NR2003 offline. Looking for yet another win. It would be a seventh win on the year as well if he were to pull it off. And we haven't had too many races this year. Only about 50 races so far. Um, so Fitzputter has won a good, like, 15% of the races we've run this year. But Zydell and Stover, these two guys have a lot of speed right now, and they're going to be hard to be here. Turner, I think, has some good speed. He's moving back up to the field to the inside of Tyree Carmen. He's now in seventh. Hartman is eighth. And then you have Ben Young and Hunter Braxton inside the top ten as Chase Buck has fallen outside. Now Fitzwater comes into this race fourth in points, 23 behind. A win here would put him nine points behind. No, 11 points behind, excuse me, of Gary Corelli heading into Dover. But uh, he's going to have to hold off both Zydell and Brad Stover here late in this run. And he's going to have to maneuver around Fisher G. Zydell is coming quick in this 47. Zero points on the year coming into this feature event, and he may get the race victory. Alex and Ronat falling off too much, but Zydell and Stover both easily passed him earlier on. No one can out Stover either. Stover's won here before in the Cup Series. A lot of experience at Rockingham and these top three drivers. And there we go for the race lead. Justin Zydell to the inside of Zachary Fitzwater for the race lead. Derek Hamill looking to win yet another race as an owner. He swept Road America with Chase Buck. He might get one here with Zydell, but Fitzwater on that outside. Now Stover going to move up to second. And, and Zydell waited for the perfect time to make that move because now he can be the one that parts the C getting around Fisher G. Fitzwater's going to get around the 89 as well. And then you got Alex and Rowe kind of choosing to get stuck behind him. Dylan Young is fifth. Sam Edio, Turner, Hartman, Young, and Braxton still the top ten. Now Brad Stover might have a shot here. The five laps to go next time by here in the Carolina 100K. And Justin Zydell is out front here at Rockingham. Oh, we got a really good run off the corner there, the pull ahead of Stover. The thing is, Zydell and Fitzwater are two of the fastest cars in this race, especially in the longer run at the end of that green flag run that we had in the middle there. So Zydell can pass Fitzwater as easily as he did. A good chance he might be able to stay ahead, but Fitzwater gonna try back on the inside of Stover for a second. It's not over yet. Four to go. Point of no return as well. So if we were to get a caution, that would rate end the race right here. So that's what happened in the Hurst Dash series race yesterday. I'm sure these guys are hoping that happens here today as well. Or Justin Zidell is hoping that happens. Nobody else is hoping that happens. They want a shot here at this 47. Fitzwater might have that shot. Alexander Earl looking to get back for third here on Brad Stover. A lot of point swinging going around here inside this top four. Three to go here in the Carolina 100K. Fitzwater's right there. But Justin Zydell has the speed. Turner up to six now. Sam Medeo down to seventh. Braxton and Alpha B inside the top ten now. Then Ben Young and Chase Buck trying to get that last point. Hartman and Smith Jr. fell way back there. They're going to fall outside the points. And here we go. Two to go, and Fitzwater's right on the back bumper of Justin Zydell. When we saw Sam Medeo lead the first 40 laps of this race, I didn't think we'd be down to the last lap in a race-win battle. Fitzwater, though, trying, but Zydell holds on to the race lead for the moment. White flag in the air here in the Carolina 100K for Justin Zydell. Will he hold off Zachary Fitzwater and get the race win? Will Fitzwater get his 27th career win on the channel? I think Zydell might have the run off the corner right here. That was Fitzwater's chance that last lap, and he did not get to it. He came in with no points on the season. 
but he's going to leave with 12 points and a race victory. Justin Zidell wins the Carolina 100K here at Rockingham. Zachary Fitzwater, Brad Stover, Alexander Rowe, Dylan Young, Nicholas Samadio, Hunter Braxton, Jesse Turner, Chase Buck, and William Brock with the last point here in this one. They were all over the place in the back of the field there, but an excellent race here at Rockingham, and Justin Zidell pulls off the race victory from deep in the field as well. He started. Where did he start in this race? 25th. He came from 25th to win this race. That 47 was fast. Very fast. Fitzwater will start on the pole for the Dover Sprint. And then Christopher Alfby, Tyree Cartman, Jacob Walker. 47 machine of Justin Zidell who won this race. will be fifth in that sprint race. Hunter Braxton. Christopher, or no, Vlad Prescott. Brad Stover, William Brock, and Chase Buck. The top ten in the fastest lap battle. And take a look at the rest of it right there. Of course, you will see the starting lineup for the Dover Sprint when we are finished here in just a moment. Nicholas Amadio was 22nd fastest on the fastest lap there, so Amadio really didn't quite have the speed, but he didn't manage to finish um, up inside the top six there, so he got something out of this race, but uh, not exactly what he wanted. Um, very interesting race, and oddly enough, a lot of guys finished a lap down. I don't know how accurate that part is, but the good thing, the only thing that matters is the top ten, so... How they finish back in there actually doesn't mean a thing because it's the fastest lap that determines the starting lineup. So I'm not too concerned about that. Um, but yeah, interesting that a lot of guys ended up a lap down. It could just be a bit of a scoring error, but obviously the top 10 is the top 10, and that is all that matters uh, here in the Wall Wall Pro Series. But uh, Ashland Boyd, Thomas Troxel, they had their respective issues earlier on in this one. Tough break for those guys, but that's just the way it goes. And Troxel will start last in the uh, sprint race at Dover for that. But how about Justin Zidell? He hasn't even gotten a point all season long. Goes out there and wins the feature here at Rockingham. Uh, this is definitely one of his best tracks. And how about it? And uh, going back to victory lane here in the Wall Wall Pro Series. Actually, first time he's won in the Wall Wall Pro Series officially. And his first win of the season, I do believe, on the channel. So, uh, huge congratulations to Zidell for grabbing it there. And he got Fitzwater to do it, too. I mean, I mean, Zidell's an experienced veteran at this point as well. He's been running for many years, but uh, when you can beat Fitzwater, you can beat anybody. And uh, that's what Zidell did right there to get this race victory here at the Rockingham Speedway. Another similar racetrack coming up next. Like I mentioned, Dover. The Dover Sprint there, and then we'll have the Hers Dash Series and, of course, the Delaware 100K. Um, that'll be the next feature event here in the Wawa Pro Series. The unofficial home race for Wawa as well, because, you know, Wawa's based in Delaware County, Pennsylvania, which is just above the actual state of Delaware. But, you know, it's about as close as we can get to the actual home of Wawa. So, kind of a, the home race. See, that's why the intro is at Dover, because it's the home of Wawa, technically. Sort of. And there's a wall right by the track, so, you know, it, it fits. Justin Zidell wins here at Rockingham. We'll see you guys next time out at the Dover Motor Speedway for the sixth event of the season. Here are the point standings for the Wall Wall Pro Series after five feature events. We'll see you guys next time for the Dover Motor Speedway. We'll try to do better the next time. Congratulations to Justin Zidell, and I will see you guys later. Later.